In this test I wanted to look at some high capacity competition 2S LiPos for use particularly in touring cars uh, where you want high voltage or other applications where you want high run time and in particular these 2S hard case ones I wanted to look at this R1 Graphene 10,000 milliamp hour LIHV 50C rated and compare it to some of the other big capacity ones like the IP into the 8400 LIHV 120C and Zombie 8200 uh, 720C uh, not an LIHV just a 7.4 volt one the OptiPower 8500 uh, 100C burst that probably means a uh, 50C rated ludicrous extreme edition 8000 milliamps 150C and the Sampa Dow 8400 and that's rated that's another 7.4 volts 120C stroke 60C this is the gold uh, standard race one now as I just mentioned some of these are LIHV these two, all the others are standard um, ones that are charged to 8.40 volts cut off. These can be charged to 8.7 volts cut off. Now the difference is that you can charge these to 8.4 but they will give less capacity but the same power delivery. If you charge them to 8.7 you get more voltage and about 10% extra runtime. But if you charge them to the 8.4, they perform equally with these, but you won't achieve the runtimes that they say on the side. They'll be about 10% down. But even so, I'm going to test them. Uh, I do that by charging, uh, cycle them where necessary. I've done other videos that show this and make sure they're all working fine. Charge them fully on an eye charge of 20 amps balance charge and then bang them straight on to a high discharge uh, resistor which is about 30 amps and measure the voltage as accurately as they discharge down to 6 volts and see what the capacity is. I repeat the test on the high voltage ones and repeat it at the high volt charging them to 8.7. And I've got all the results on the chart and I'll show you uh, what the conclusions are. Now a couple of things to look at, at these physically is that some of them look exactly the same and must have come from the same factory. I'm pretty sure that this IP and this R1 have come from the same factory. But the fact is you, you can buy uh, different grades of LiPos and they can select them out for capacity as well. And these have probably been, been selected for capacity but I'll check them to see if they can deliver the same voltage. All these batteries are hard case and they're all uh, up to the maximum thickness of 25 millimeters. They're all 25 mil thick, just about small variations. Another thing to notice is the connections, minus plus and the two mil uh, balance socket. On the other side these go all the way through but no balance socket so you have to be careful when you put them in your car which way you're going to put them in. Uh, that's got a nice minus and plus on the label. This is just embossed. So you have to be careful because some of these others have got the positive and negative the other way around. And if you borrow them they look almost the same and uh, you don't want to connect them the wrong way around but you speed them up. We've got this Sampadao one. Uh, interestingly it's 4mm sockets. Every, every one of these others is 5mm. This is 4mm and the 2mm uh, plug, balance plug goes all the way through. Which is excellent because you can use it either way around and still be able to connect up your um, balance lead it quite easily if you've got little blanking plugs you've blanked off one side for safety and then you can decide whether you want the plus and the minus which way which side you want it on
Now this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery and that's pretty large uh, as batteries go. They've got bigger and bigger over the years. Here was uh, one for a few years ago I used to sell. Uh, it's still 5,000 milliamps. It's um, a little bit thinner but the capacity has doubled since those days. But I'll just show you uh, the sort of size of LiPo you can get. Uh, originally LiPos are very small. They came like this as 200 milliamp hour. Uh, two of them joined together there. So we've come a long way since those days. And how far have we come? Well if you look at this battery here this is um, 32,000 milliamps. Uh, there it is, 32,000. It's just got a bit of a sticker over it. And uh, it weighs 3.6 kilograms. <laughs> 32,000. It's an LIH V cell, but this is actually a 6S. So if you consider that that's 32,000, that's equivalent to three of these make 30,000. And then to this is a 2S make 6S, you'll need a th 3 times 3, you'll need 9 of these to make up that big battery. And if you consider these um, can be up to nearly £100 each, that to make one of these from 9 of these would be getting on for £900 UK money. Which means how much is this? Well this is only £350. So, either they're making a lot of money out of making these, or this is a bargain. Now I want to talk about the, ten, the rating. 10C sounds rubbish, like how can you can't deliver any power, what use is it? A lot of people don't understand about the C rating, and the manufacturers know this, that's why they keep uh, putting the C ratings up on sales, uh, 150C. So that people say, oh, 150C, got to buy it. It's got to be much better than 100C1 or less. And it's all about the discharge amps that you can get out of a battery. And it's based on the capacity. Now, originally when they made batteries, they were, say, 1,000 milliamp hours. And 1C rating, what did that mean? Well, 1,000 milliamps is actually 1 amp. And 1C means you could draw an amp for an hour. Now, next thing they did was make a 2C battery, which meant it was 2 times 1. It could deliver 2 amps, and so on. We started getting higher power batteries. Here's an old one I showed you before, 5,000, 20C. 5,000 milliamps was actually 5 amps. Multiplied by 20, it's 100 amps. Now got the situation where things are 150C times 8,000 or 8. As you can see, it's, nearly, it's about a thousand, over 1,000 amps, they say. Well, obviously, you can't do 1,000 amps out of, out of this battery. These ratings are also now divided into two. You've got, and it's shown up on this one, they give you the two ratings. It says 120C and 60C. Well, 60C is the continuous rating, 120C is called a burst rating, and it's a sort of current that you can draw out of them for, say, about 10 seconds before the thing overheats or gets damaged. And most of these are burst ratings, 150C, that's a burst, it should be 75C. And this, this one says 50C, and that will be uh, probably 100C. A burst so it's very confusing they all get mixed up this one says burst 100 C which would mean that the normal uh, rating would be 50 C others they don't actually tell you just 120 C it's manufacturers confusing you so going back to this one 10 C 32 amps hours times 10 320 amps that's that can deliver 320 amps continuous 50 C times 10 500 amps this one is 320 amps this is 500 amps very confusing 
the batteries have now got so powerful the C ratings begin to become a bit meaningless anyway I've tested them and what's more important is how does the voltage hold up under load if you're trying to go as fast as possible you don't want the battery to to die when you load it up you want the voltage to be high the high C rating batteries normally mean that they've got low internal resistance they can supply plenty of uh, power and hold the voltage up but for how long? Discharged the R110000 that had been charged to the LIHV 8.7 volts fully I discharged it and cut it off at 6.00 it's just recovered slightly managed to get 9.4 9400 milliamp hours didn't quite make 10,000 but that's the highest reading I've had on any of these batteries so, and the temperature it got to about 40 odd degrees C at the end of a discharge which is about normal for all these batteries I'm just going to check the uh, the Intellect 84 charge them up on the I charge at 20 amps doing an LIHV charge on this one a test I've got a couple others just to, to finish off the Sumper Dow and I've got all these others here I've been doing and I've got the chart which um, I'll have all the results at the end the Intellect IP8400 charge the LIHV 8.7 volt cut off and discharge of 6 volts it made 8,599 milliamps which uh, is just above its 8,400 spec and the temperature is only about the Opti power 8,500 fully discharged made 7,573 down to 6.0 volts so it didn't quite make the 8500 it may do if it was discharged at a lower current zombie 8200 discharged dead flat from full charge managed to get 7593 about 44 conclusions on these high capacity 2S LiPos for competition touring car and other types of uh, linky racing where voltage is essential and also the capacity, the high capacity if you want a long run time in a vehicle in particular the R1 10,000 is it the highest capacity out of all these batteries and whether this C rating 50C, 150C uh, makes any difference well I've charged them up and discharged them and got the chart and I've summarized it here and I've put it into a list of ranking and I've done it by capacity this time the one with the highest capacity so the R1 Graphene 10,000 did come out top and uh, because it's an LIHV, I've charged it at the standard 8.4 volts and also at the LIHV 8.7 volt cutoff. And as you can see, the rating of 10,000 is really applies to the LIHV. And I managed to get 9,400 by discharging it down to 6.0 volts from full charge. So that's the most I get out of it. But even at we compare them at 8.4 which is the competition shut off voltage uh, which you can do it doesn't have any uh, negative effects except the capacity so it still came out top the 10,000 now I have rated them in capacity from top to bottom the highest to the lowest and then over here we look at the weights and, and other figures as well so just briefly the R1 graphing came out top this Sumperdow came out extremely well, the 8400 didn't quite, it's only a 7.4, not a high voltage one, it almost made the same as the R1, very good. Then the Intellect, 7800, and it exceeded its 8400 rating when charged to the high voltage, made 8, 000, nearly 8600, which is very good. Next up on capacity, not much in it. Ludicrous Extreme didn't quite make 8,000. 
the Zombie 82 didn't make 82 either. The Octipower 85 didn't come anywhere near 85. And then I've also added in the Intellect 7600, which uh, as a, the reason I've done that, I'll show you in a minute. Although it's only uh, 7000 or 7800 when high voltage, I did it for voltage. So that's if you want uh, the highest capacity, that's the one that it, the R1 does deliver. But if you're racing and want power, the big capacity ones, do they deliver highest power too? Well, the R1 only rated at 50C, you think maybe it wouldn't, deliver the sort of power that the these others rated at 150C, 120C. But I think these are burst regions. They don't actually tell you. The Sumpadow does. It says that's a 60C normal 120C burst. And I think you can count these as burst ratings as well. But even so... If that was a burst, that would be a 75C is normally half of the, it is the normal rating. So 50C would still seem to be lower than the others, but how did it perform? Well, I've got uh, three readings for voltage under load, beginning of the race, part way through, depending on what sort of motor you're running. I've taken it up to 4,000. Now, which one came out top? Well, I've ranked them on the right uh, based on voltage, and you can see the Sumpadow one easily. Standard 8.4 volts, 7.5 at 4,000. It outclassed all the others. In fact, the second place was the Intellect 8,400, and then the R1. So they have a tiny bit of compromise, but to get the capacity, but it's very small. 746, 747, there's virtually nothing in it. So they were rated first Sampadao, second Intellect, third R1. Uh, on voltage delivery under load. Then also the Zombie 8 2 did very well, it's equal third, 7.46 with the R1 graphene. And we go down, you got, I've added in the Intellect 7600, and the reason why it was as good, 7.45, almost as good as these others at 7.46. 7.47, it's very close. And then you've got the Ludicrous 744 and the OptiPower. If you're still uh, looking at which one you should use, you can also look at the weight. And as I've said before, weight normally equals power and capacity. And in this case it is. They're all very similar. These are quite heavy batteries in 334.9, 327.4. And the highest one... Is for capacity is definitely the heaviest one. But the Sampadal did well, only 327.5 grams, and it, it delivered the most power. But generally, after that, it's the heavier ones, and as we go down, the rate it goes down, but there's not much in it, because the weights are very similar. The OptiPower 8.5 was lighter than the others, and that's possibly why it didn't deliver. It saved a bit of weight. And you see it's almost exactly the same weight as the Intellect, one and the intellect uh, outperformed it uh, but not quite on capacity so i just added that in to show you um these are all full size batteries by the way which is like 25 millimeters thick they vary by about half a mil and um so they're the same size if you if you're going to use one they're not shorty or low center of gravity or anything like that one more thing in check is the is the cost. Uh, these are the retail costs in this country, and this R1 graphene has a massive retail cost of 110 pounds, whereas the Intellet 84, which was not far behind it, is 78 pound. Big difference. Sampadal, which came out extremely well on power delivery, in fact, one is quite an expensive battery, whereas the Ludicrous you can pick up quite cheap on the internet the zombie you might get it cheaper but that's the recommended it's very high expensive OptiPower is relatively cheap and this uh, the Intellex again the 7.6 is quite a, a relatively cheap battery so you can look at the cost you can look at the weight you can look at the duration or the power delivery it's it's all there to show you no point looking at the C rating that doesn't really help you at all to and just look at some of the other figures